Alice Springs Mayor Matt Patterson joins us. Really appreciate your time. I know you're probably getting sick and tired of the media, Matt. Is that a good idea, that, that meeting Monday night? Do you think that'll be embraced by the local community? Hey, mate, thanks for having me. Look, uh, I won't say that I am getting sick of the media. I think that more people that know about this uh, around the country is um, a good thing, to be honest. We certainly need people from around the country to understand what's happening in the middle of it. So I'm certainly grateful for any media that's here talking about it. Um, is it a good thing on Monday? Yeah, I think it, it absolutely is. People want to feel heard and, you know, people have been talking about this for a long time. We just feel like no one's listening. So I take my hat off to Garth. I mean, the amount of stuff that that poor bloke's been through in the last few years, I just don't know how he's endured it. He's, um, he's certainly a better man than me. I just would be broken and... You know, I've seen his shop being ram raided and things stolen and all of those sort of things. So I think I take my hat off to him and he's just, he loves Alice Springs and just wants it to uh, to be fixed, mate. He runs a, a motorcycle shop, is, is that right, Matt? Yeah, that's right. And he's, you know, he's given so much to the community. Um, he's, he sponsors race teams, he sponsors school kids. He, he, he is the epitome of what small business does for a small community. I was driving through his shop and then stealing motorbikes and, you know, it is hard to fathom, but look, he just wants the community to rally behind him. They are doing that. And um, as I said, more people singing this tune that Alice Springs need help, the better. It strikes me that uh, some of the locals, you included, might be getting a bit sick and tired of everyone who's not in Alice Springs deciding that they can come up with the solution to this problem. Would I be right in suggesting that? Oh, look, I, I think, look, we need, oh, we need help. And that help certainly is just going to come from the Northern Territory. And um, the point is that people who make decisions in Canberra, you know, they come around, they come from all parts of Australia. But when they make policy changes, it's got massive ramifications on community like Alice Springs. So I've just, you know, people from the East Coast and, and down South think that policy changes, certain policy changes are good. Well, you come to the Territory, come to Central Australia first, so you can see firsthand what it will do to the community. And um, look, the, the reality is lots of people have never been to Alice Springs and aren't gonna come, but they can't believe the things that we're going through, um, you know, they can't believe the videos and so it's certainly been an eye-opener so i do urge anyone when they do make those policy changes as governments or parliaments to come to Alice springs to witness it firsthand what it will what ramifications it will have on the community i mentioned matt i was there 40 years ago with charles and die and and witnessed some of that after dark violence it's extraordinary isn't it that 40 years later here we are again with the same problem well, I can't comment on what happened 40 years ago because I'm I'm not that old. But um, look, it's <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's um it's pretty bad at the moment. And you know the best descriptive word that I can give you about Alice Springs is that it's scary, and because you don't know what you're going to get. So, as I said, you would be well aware, Steve, of, of what's happening here. But the 13 year old wielding a machete uh, in a shopping centre, people were locked inside. It's 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 pretty hard to fathom that it's happening. So we've certainly seen it get a whole lot worse since Stronger Futures um, lapsed in July. Um, but I don't want to say that that's, you know, that's the only reason. It was bad before July, but it's just certainly um, fast-tracked the, the crime and any social behaviour. And we've seen the restrictions being put in place, so we'll wait and see what happens. Four days on from that meeting with the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, Matt, uh, what would you describe your feeling about that meeting today, this Friday afternoon? Well, a few things. I, I mean, clearly resourcing is an issue in the Northern Territory and and that's not set out what the AFP is to do. I understand that. Uh, I, I did hear, I think, that the Chief Minister has said something about policing in Alice Springs today, so I look forward to that. Uh, media release, but you know, I was welcomed by the the local member Mac Marion Scrimgeour's comments yesterday that if the Northern Territory government um, aren't up to it, the feds will step back in again. So, look, people are listening, 
And um, as I said, I'll continue knocking on doors to make sure that we get the resources needed. We don't have enough police. It's not sustainable to keep suffering this level of any social behaviour and crime. So um, thank you for getting the message out there, Steve. No, thank you. I mean, I think you've been pivotal in making this a national issue. It's people like yourself who are in the community, the local mayor, you know better than just about anyone what's going on. And I just want to see uh, a place like Alice Springs thrive and prosper. And, you know, I can just imagine the number of tourists who are, who are now trying to avoid it because of all the publicity, but it, it had to happen. So thanks very much for your time and good luck uh, in the campaign going forward, Matt. Yeah, thank you very much and thanks for the time.